Coming up on 5 Minute News. Ukraine prepares for renewed Russian assault. Austrian Chancellor to meet Putin in hope of building bridges. And Macron versus Le Pen in fight for French presidency. It's Monday, April 11. I'm Anthony Davis. Russia lined up more firepower and tapped a decorated general to take centralized control of the war ahead of a potentially decisive showdown in eastern Ukraine that could start within days as Ukrainian forces dug in on Sunday. President Volodymyr Zelensky warned in his nightly address to the nation that the coming week would be as crucial as any in the war. Russian troops will move to even larger operations in the east of our state. Experts have said the next phase of the battle may begin with a full-scale offensive. The outcome could determine the course of the conflict, which has flattened cities, killed untold thousands, and isolated Moscow economically and politically. Questions remain about the ability of Russia's depleted and demoralized forces to conquer much ground after their advance on the capital, Kiev, was repelled by determined Ukrainian defenders. In Washington, a senior U.S. official said that Russia had appointed General Alexander Dvornikov, one of its most seasoned military chiefs, to oversee the invasion. Until now, Russia has had no central war commander on the ground. The new battlefield leadership comes as the Russian military prepares for what is expected to be a large, focused push to expand control in Ukraine's east. Russia-backed separatists have fought Ukrainian forces in the eastern Donbass region since 2014 and declared some territory there as independent. Six-year-old Dvornikov gained prominence as head of the Russian forces deployed to Syria in 2015 to shore up President Bashar Assad's government during the country's devastating civil war. U.S. officials say he has a record of brutality against civilians in Syria and other theatres of war. Austrian Chancellor Karl Nehammer will meet Russian President Vladimir Putin in Moscow today, he said, adding he hoped to build bridges between Russia and Ukraine to stop the war of aggression. Nehammer's meeting would be the first face-to-face -face encounter between Putin and a European Union leader since Russia invaded Ukraine on February 24th, triggering a broad Western effort to isolate Moscow. We are militarily neutral but have a clear position on the Russian war of aggression against Ukraine, he wrote on Twitter, referring to Austria's position. It must stop. It needs humanitarian corridors, ceasefire and full investigation of war crimes. The Russian leader has been largely shunned by Western leaders since the start of the conflict, though he met Israeli Prime Minister Naftali Bennett in the Kremlin in early March. Nehammer's planned trip to Moscow comes after he met Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky in Kiev on Saturday. Nehammer said that with the Moscow visit, he aims to act as a bridge builder between Russia and Ukraine, hoping to do everything possible to make the war stop and to ensure that steps are taken in the direction of peace. France's Emmanuel Macron will face far-right nationalist Marine Le Pen in a winner-takes-all runoff for the French presidency, after they both advanced on Sunday in the first round of voting in the country's election to set up another head-to-head -head clash of their sharply opposing visions for France. But while Macron won their last contest in 2017 by a landslide to become France's youngest ever president, the same outcome this time is far from guaranteed. Macron, now 44, emerged ahead from Sunday's first round, but the runoff is essentially a new election, and the next two weeks of campaigning to the April 24th second round vote promise to be bruising and confrontational against his 53-year-old political nemesis. Savvier and more polished as she makes her third attempt to become France's first woman president, Le Pen was handsomely rewarded on Sunday at the ballot box for her years-long effort to rebrand herself as more pragmatic and less extreme. 
Macron has accused Le Pen of pushing an extremist manifesto of racist, ruinous policies. Le Pen wants to roll back some rights for Muslims, banning them from wearing headscarves in public, and to drastically reduce immigration from outside Europe. On Sunday, she racked up her best-ever first-round tally of votes. With most votes counted, Macron had just over 27% and Le Pen had just under 24%. Macron also improved on his first round showing in 2017, despite his presidency being rocked by an almost unrelenting series of both domestic and international crises. They include Russia's war in Ukraine that overshadowed the election and diverted his focus from the campaign. With polling suggesting that the runoff against Le Pen could be close, Macron immediately started throwing his energies into the battle. Claiming that Le Pen would align France with populists and xenophobes, he said, that's not us. The election outcome will have wide international influence as Europe struggles to contain the havoc wreaked by Vladimir Putin's invasion of Ukraine. You can subscribe to 5-Minute News on YouTube with your preferred podcast app. Ask your smart speaker or enable 5-Minute News as your Amazon Alexa flash briefing skill. Subscribe, rate and review online at 5minute.news. 5-Minute News is an evergreen podcast covering politics, inequality, health and climate, delivering independent, unbiased and essential world news daily.